Front Row Motorsports, Stuart Haas Racing merging, Trackhouse and Colleague merging, where's Noah Gragson going, is Cole Custer coming back to the Cup Series, and what about Chase Briscoe? Welcome back to Break Hard, my name is Matt, and yeah, silly season is absolutely in full swing. And before we get into it, no, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is not buying a charter. And he's not going to unless he has a financial partner, and none of that has been talked about in any of the things literally anybody's been hearing. So, as much as the internet wants to spend his money for him, doesn't appear that's going to happen. But things that we have been hearing. Door Bumper Clear, uh, on their podcast this week, talked about a few rumors that have been kind of floating around, and I think they're... Three, two of them are ones that we've kind of heard already in the past. The first one and the biggest one going right now uh, that we talked about last week is Front Row Motorsports and Stuart Haas Racing merging. Or how they kind of broke it down would be that Front Row Motorsport would be buying two of these Stuart Haas Racing charters as well as their shop and becoming a four-car Tier 1 Ford team in 2025. The other two charters at Stuart Haas Racing apparently will be sold off and Stuart Haas Racing will cease to exist as... Dale so eloquently said to Saul uh, in Pineapple Express. What do you mean, dead? I mean, it ceased to exist. Dead. It ceased to live. It's deceased now. That's what's happening. So, if that does happen, we already know Michael McDowell has left the team at the end of the year, and he's headed to Spire Motorsports in 2025. He was the first person to really sign and kick off the, you know, the uh, whole silly season process here. So, that leaves three rides open at this new FRM SHR type of merged team. Who gets those? Well, Cole Custer has been rumored to get that 34 car, and by all accounts, if SHR had continued on into 2025, Cole Custer was going to get that 41 seat back at Stuart Haas Racing, replacing Ryan Priest. So who ends up in the other two cars? Well, Josh Berry is still on offer, and then you have Chase Briscoe, uh, Noah Gragson, and uh, you know Ryan Priest is still out there as well. Another name that has popped up is Riley Herbst. And of course, he brings monster sponsorship from his family's B2B deal uh, for their terrible Hearst gas station convenience stores. Uh, you know, that could be, or Terribles, rather, is their actual name. Before somebody in the comments is like, it's called Terribles. You don't ever even have been out here. I've been to a Terribles before. <laughs> it's a lovely gas station. There's no Bucky's, but, you know, you can't, you can't all set the standard for gas station convenience stores. So those are kind of the names that have been floating around for this FRM SHR merger team, uh, however that's going to work out. Another merger that has continually been talked about, probably for the better part of 12 months at this point, is Trackhouse buying out the Collig Cup operation and merging that into one four-car team. Matt Collig seemingly is done spending his own money uh, in NASCAR, or at least in the Cup Series. That's why they have the drivers that they have this year uh, on the Cup side. Their cup program has just never worked out the same way that their Xfinity program has. The model that they built their Xfinity program off hasn't worked up here. And that's what concerns me about all the fans I want Dale Jr. to move up to the cup series. His model of business in at JRM, I don't think is going to have the same success in the cup series. But for Trackhouse, Justin Moneybags Marks finally gets to have that four car team he desperately wants and needs at this point. Because right now he currently has four drivers under contract and he only has two seats. If he manages to get those colleague seats, well, Daniel Hemrick's not coming over because his cup career isn't long for this world, and that 16 car is just a hodgepodge, you know, mix of drivers that just bring money for the ride that month or race or whatever it is, and none of those guys are going to be a part of the track house plans. So track house, like we know, they have Rosh Hussain underneath a long-term contract. They have SVG, who they want to move up to the cup series next year, and they have Zane Smith under contract, currently on loan to Spire, Despite all the fans out there that are like, get rid of Zane Smith, he's been terrible. It's been 13 races with a third team at Spire that just started up this year. Maybe we give him some time. Chase Elliott got 100 races uh, of leniency before he finally won, and fans are like, that's just the norm. That's just how things are now. It just takes 100 races for people to win in Hendrick Motorsports equipment, the top-tier equipment out there. Yeah, it was down years for Hendrick. I get it during that time period. But for Chase... He got the leniency. Zane Smith has not been granted that leniency by anybody on the internet, which is bizarre to me. They also have Daniel Suarez. Now he's in a contract year. Do they re-sign him? Because he did win this year. He won at Atlanta. But is a drafting track win really enough to keep you in the Cup Series? I would argue no, and I don't think it is. I think that seat will open up at the end of the season, and they will let Daniel Suarez go. Who could get that ride? Well, According to DBC, a name that has garnered a lot of interest around the garage area is Noah Gragson. We can go ahead and count off 
the Toyota teams. He's not going to Gibbs. He's not going to 2311. And he's certainly not going back to Legacy. So they're out. The other teams that are on offer. If an RFK lands a third charter, maybe Noah's in play for them. I don't know if he really fits their business mold, but he's a guy that could be out there potentially for them. The team that fits Noah Gragson the most is Trackhouse, right? They're very forward. They're bombastic. They're great with the fans. They're aggressive. They're edgy. They're everything that Noah Gragson is. That, I just described Ross Chastain. That's Noah Gragson as well. That could be a landing spot for him, especially if a team wants to take a flyer on him and, you know, try to get this diamond in the rough, essentially damaged goods, but he's been really good to start off this year. If you can't get that done, well, there is, of course, open seats at this FRM SHR merger uh, that he could potentially go back to. But he is on a one year deal with Stuart Haas Racing, so he's free to talk to anybody, uh, essentially, um, by the end of the year. Other things that are going on. Obviously, when we talked about FRM, we mentioned Chase Briscoe. Harrison Burton out at Wood Brothers at the end of the year. I think that's a foregone conclusion at this point. Everybody's heard the same rumor. That is going to happen. John Wood has taken control of that Wood Brothers team. And as DBC said, uh, they, you know, it appears that he wants to make some sort of changes. He now has the helm. Let's make changes here. Harrison Burton has done nothing of, uh, of memory to warrant that seat at this point. Gen 7 era has not been good to the Wood Brothers, right? It's been since 2016 since they've been to victory lane, and they've been trying to get that 100th win. Paul Menard couldn't get it. Matt DiBenedetto couldn't get it, even though he handed away probably two wins for them where he should have been able to get it. Harrison Burton hasn't come close to getting it. Maybe Chase Briscoe is that guy. Ford remains high on Chase Briscoe, despite him being in the Cup Series for four seasons and some change and only having one win. He's approaching his 30th birthday this year, and his production level should start to ramp up. So maybe Ford is looking at this as a, you know, potential landing spot for one of their, you know, prized possessions at this point. And maybe they can help turn that around. We'll have to wait and see on that, but it is a good landing spot for him if that's where he goes. It is a Penske prep car. I do think he can get more out of that car than what Harrison Burton's getting out of it. And if Ford is so high on him, you could maybe see some more Ford resources going towards that car. Harrison Burton's been a pay driver. He's a he's a buy ride guy uh, for his career. Nothing wrong with that. He's a four-time Xfinity Series winner. That's more than a lot of guys that have bought rides out there. But I think the Xfinity Series is maybe where Harrison Burton's talent level has topped at, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think he can make a great career in the Xfinity Series, and maybe that's where he ends up at in 2025. But for now, Briscoe going over there makes a lot of sense. A few other things that we continue to hear, uh, JTG Doherty Racing. They put out a flyer for their Fan Fest this week for the Coke 600 week. And on the flyer it says, come meet driver Ricky Sinhouse Jr. and team owner Gordon Smith. No mention of Tad or Jody Geschichter in there, which isn't a surprise. It appears that they have completely exited their roles as team owners within that team. That team will undergo a rebrand if it stays with Gordon Smith and Brad Doherty. There is some smoke kind of circling that team still about potential merger, potential alliance, something in that realm. Uh, and as more information becomes available, yeah, I'll share it here. But there appears to be something going on over there with them. And then continue to hear that General Motors tested a new body for the Cup Series in the wind tunnel have asked around to multiple people, and it is a highly guarded secret. Like, you talk about this, we'll blacklist you type of thing, which is certainly on on brand. It makes a lot of sense, especially if it's a highly guarded secret, because this, you know, goes out further than just the NASCAR Cup Series world. This, you know, extends into the automotive landscape as a whole. So, if I find out anything on that, I have continued to ask around to multiple Chevy people, and all of them are like, yeah, dude, how's the weather up where you're living today? No, no, no mention of the question that I asked. So I completely understand it. I get that this is a highly guarded secret for them. There's still something big floating on out there. And uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But silly season is very much not even close to being done yet. It is about to kick off into full swing as we approach Coke 600 week here. So let me know in the comments what you think about all the rumors that have been going on. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.